Hi, welcome back to Grains and Small Places. And today we're going to be making some delicious carrot cake with a cream cheese frosting and we're making it with fresh milled flour. So let's get started. Okay, so to start our carrot cake, I'm going to be using soft white wheat. If you use a different wheat, you may need to use less than what I do. But I'm gonna go ahead and start out with about 315 grams. I will make sure to put a link in the description box below with the recipe, that way it'll have cups and weights for you. Okay, and I'll also make sure to put down in the description box below links to the products that you see me using. I get lots of questions about my mixer, my mill, these uh, storage containers. So I will make sure to put links to all of those down in the description box below. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this on over to my mill and we're gonna go ahead and mill it into our freshly milled flour. I'm using my Nutramil Harvest Grain Mill and right now I have a coupon code that I can share with you. It will get you $20 off anything at the Nutramil or Bosch store. The coupon code is GRAINY and I will make sure to put a link in the description box below for that. And we found these beautiful carrots at the local market. And so I wanted to really kind of showcase these, like just, they just look so delicious <laughs> when we got them. So we grabbed some to eat fresh and then we grabbed some to go ahead and turn into this carrot cake. So we're gonna go ahead and just shred these on up so we can use them. I need about three cups or so. Like obviously carrots depend on size. So somewhere between six and eight, you might need a little more carrots or a little less depending on the size of your carrots and then you wanna make sure that you peel them before you shred them. Okay, so we're going to melt down one cup of butter or I guess that's two sticks of butter. And then we're also going to use a little bit of olive oil or you can use avocado oil or whatever non-flavored oil you would like to use. Or you could probably go ahead and just use all butter or all oil. It just might affect the texture a little bit differently. Okay, and then I'm gonna use about 115 grams of the olive oil, it's about a half a cup. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to the side because my freshly milled flour is done milling. So I'm going to go ahead and add my dry ingredients to that. And here is the freshly milled soft white wheat flour to this. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my sugars to this, which is a little, different for cake. So we're gonna use about a cup of regular cane sugar or just what regular sugar and a cup of brown sugar. This is um, brown sugar, but there's also some sucanat that I got from my last um, Azure standard haul, which if you wanna see my very first video where I made with that, you can check that out on my video. I'll try to put a link to that below because that was kind of a fun experience, first time for me. So that was one cup of raw cane sugar, one cup of sucanat or brown sugar. Then I'm gonna add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. And I really like to use this non-aluminum added baking powder. And I'm also going to use one and a half teaspoons of baking soda. And make sure to give those, the, the baking soda and the baking powder, just a little stir before you use them because they can settle and then they're not so active. Also, you wanna make sure that your baking powder and baking soda are less than six months old because they do tend to go bad and then they don't give you the rise that you're looking for. I put those away so I wouldn't forget that I had already added them. And then I'm gonna add a teaspoon of salt. If you're using salted butter, you may want to decrease the amount of salt that you're adding, but because we were using unsalted butter, that's a good amount. Okay, so now for the seasonings, I'm going to do a teaspoon of ground ginger. If you had fresh ginger, that would be delicious in here. And then two teaspoons of cinnamon. And you all know I love my Ceylon cinnamon that we got from Azure the last haul also. Okay, so I have to refill my little bottle because this bottle is empty. So I'm glad I got that in. And then I'm gonna use my little zester here and zest in, this is just a whole nutmeg. You can use ground nutmeg, but I find that the flavor of this is just so much better when you grind it in yourself. About a half a teaspoon of that.
Okay, so with all these, I'm just going to mix this together. I'm just using my little measuring spoon here. Probably would be better to use a whisk or a fork or something to get it more evenly incorporated. That smells amazing. Okay, so now this is all mixed together nicely. I'm gonna go ahead and go back to working on my wet ingredients and grab my mixer. Okay, so to my mixer here, I'm gonna go ahead and add in that oil and melted butter. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and just give that a little mix. Alrighty. To this, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my eggs. And I'm gonna do that one at a time and just kind of mix in between each one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on a mixture. For this, I like to start with room temperature eggs. So I did pull these out to let them sit. Obviously, if you have farm fresh eggs, then you probably already have yours at room temperature. And I guess I'm pretty lucky that I didn't get any shells in that. Maybe I should have cracked those in a separate bowl first. I'm gonna wash my hands real quick. Okay, and to this, we're going to add about a half a cup of yogurt. If you don't have yogurt, you can use sour cream, you can use kefir, you can ha use buttermilk, just some kind of acidic liquid. If you're looking to make this completely from scratch, I do have a video to teach you how to make your own yogurt. You can also turn that into Greek yogurt and you can also take it further and turn it into cream cheese. So you could make this whole thing from scratch if you wanna do that, I'll try to put a link in the description box below for that video. Okay, and then to this, I'm gonna put a tablespoon of our homemade vanilla extract. I actually have a video on how to make that as well from scratch. Okay, I'm gonna just turn this up a bit. Okay, once that's nice and combined, I'm gonna go ahead and then put in my dry ingredients, also including my sugar. I know that's not necessarily a dry ingredient, but that's how we're going to do it for this one. I'm going to put in that. Make sure to scrape down your sides as needed for this. So I'm just going to start this off very, make sure this is back on low and start off very low. Okay, I just want to give this a little scrape. I'm gonna pull this out. That way I can just make sure everything is combined and we don't have anything stuck to the bottom or to the sides. Okay, that looks great. Okay, so now that everything is all incorporated, we can add in our mix-ins. So I'm gonna be using three cups of shredded carrots. And if you want, you can add a cup of walnuts that are chopped or pecans, raisins, whatever fixins you want to add. I'm just gonna go ahead and put in the carrots. Nice and finely shredded. If I was making this cake just for myself, I would add pecans and walnuts and probably raisins. But because Matt is going to be enjoying this also, and Cody, they don't prefer to have any nuts or raisins. So what I'm going to do is just make it without either of those and just do the carrots. And then I can add some nuts on the top of mine and Haley's when we go to enjoy it. All right, I'm gonna slowly mix in the add-ins. We don't wanna overdo it here. So if I need to at the end, I'm just going to just do this with my spatula. I'm 
All right, that's looking great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do and just pull this out and finish folding this in, Chilla, but I wanna go ahead and get all the goodies off of here. Carrots make it a little fun. <laughs> So right there is when you would want to add in any of your carrot cake favorite mix-ins. I'm just making sure that all the carrots are evenly distributed before I get my pans. So now I want to go ahead and preheat my oven. I really like to allow fresh mold flour to sit and kind of absorb the moisture for a little bit before I bake things, which is why I don't start my recipes out with preheat your oven because I like to use that preheat time to allow this to kind of absorb the moisture, soften the bran and all of that. So I'm gonna set this batter to the side and then we can prepare our cake pans while we're also waiting for the oven to preheat. We're gonna preheat our oven to 350 degrees. This is gonna bake somewhere between 35 and 45 minutes. So just keep an eye on it. I'm using eight inch cake pans. If your cake pans are the nine inch cake pans, then you will probably need to bake yours for a little bit less time but you wanna make sure to, I'm gonna go ahead and coat my pans. And then I like to, when I'm preheating my oven, just prepare little circles of parchment paper. I think this is the best way <laughs> to do it for uh, cakes. I show you how to do it in, I think my chocolate cake recipe. And what I do is then spray it on the bottom and then I'll spray it above here, but just set this on the parchment paper, take a pencil, trace it around perfect circle. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and spray this part of the paper also. This really helps for your cakes to not stick. Okay, so I just wanna make sure that's all pressed down and not like writing up too much on the sides or anything like that. Okay, and then I'm going to try to divide the batter up in half as evenly as possible. You can, of course, put this on a scale to try to get it more accurate. Just gonna try to eyeball it as best as I can. Okay, and then into the oven they go. Okay, they are done, and I'm gonna let them sit in the trays for about 10 minutes or so to, while they cool down before I try to flip them out. And I had a little bit of wanting to come over the edge a little bit, but I think that'll be okay. So I'm gonna let these cool for about 10 minutes and then we'll be back. Okay, so here when I talk about when the cake starts to separate from the pan, that's how you know that your cake has been baked all the way through. So it's nice and done, it's cool, and it's ready to be pulled out. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just make sure that this is not stuck to the sides all the way around. Okay. Flip that out. And say a little prayer. <laughs> ah, nice. And just peel that off nice and beautiful it smells delicious okay and I only have one cooling rack <laughs> so I'm gonna um, turn the other one out on my plate here just gonna make sure this one also isn't stuck to the sides of the pan lovely flip that one out all right, two for two. I really love that little trick of the <laughs> parchment paper rounds and they come right off because we sprayed both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get both of these on my cooling rack because I don't want this to get all condensation as it's trying to cool and all that. So let me try my best. Okay, perfect. Okay, we're going to let these cool down all the way before we try to put any frosting on them. So I will be back when it's time to frost. Okay, so to make the cream cheese buttercream frosting, I'm gonna go ahead and use two sticks of the cream cheese and one stick of butter. Now you need to make sure these are very softened. You don't wanna start with 
cold <laughs> butter or cream cheese. So let these sit out for about an hour or so before you get ready to make. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and start creaming these together. Okay, that's looking nice and starting to get fluffy. I'm using unsalted butter here, so I'm gonna go ahead and just add just a pinch of salt. That helps balance out the sweetness. And then I'm going to add two teaspoons of my homemade vanilla extract. And a little splash more. <laughs> For good measure. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and mix that in together. Okay, I'm gonna show you. It's looking nice and silky smooth. This happens pretty quick in this mixer. We're gonna be putting in somewhere a total of three to five cups of powdered sugar. This is depending on your sweetness level. I'm gonna start out with like two and a half cups. And then we'll come back and check it and then make sure this is on low before you start mixing it in. Sometimes you just gotta get kind of creative with a little scraper here. <laughs> Okay, I'm just going to scrape down all the goodies here. Okay, and then I'm gonna go ahead and add in that other half a cup of powdered sugar. Mix that in, starting on low. Okay. That's looking nice and creamy and beautiful for a frosting. Just gonna give it a little taste. Okay, wow. I think I'll go ahead and put in another half a cup of powdered sugar. So this is gonna give us about three and a half to four cups because I'm guessing some of these might've been larger than a half a cup. Okay, I'm very happy with that. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and let this set to the side and wait for our cakes to be finished and cooled. We wanna make sure that they're cooled all the way before we frost them. Okay, I'm just gonna use one of these disposable piping bags. I like to just take this and put it over top of a large cup. And this has just been sitting and waiting for me nice and patiently. So I'm just going to scoop this out put this beautiful cream cheese butter cream frosting into my piping bag so that it's nice and ready to go as soon as the cakes are cooled. So to speed up the process, you could put your cakes in the fridge or the freezer. And sometimes they're a little bit easier to ice or frost if they've been slightly frozen. But we want to enjoy this today, so I'm probably just going to go ahead and let them cool shortly here on the counter. That works nicely, and then I just kind of work that down towards the bottom. 
if it's not already, oftentimes it just goes straight to the bottom for me. And then I will end up cutting the tip off when I get ready to pipe it. But I like to just kind of store this until it's ready, just like that. And we'll be back when it's time to frost it. Okay, these are nice and cooled and I see it got stuck a little bit to my cooling tray, but you know what, that's okay. We're just gonna put it back together just like that. Because we're gonna put the two ugly sides together, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the tip off of this. So I'm gonna use about a third of this. I'm just gonna start from the center and go around. This should leave me plenty to top the cake and do the sides. Okay, and then we're gonna put this one on top. Hopefully it didn't stick, we'll see. Okay, okay that one did better. All right, so I'm just gonna put this one right on top and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna start from the center and go around. This frosting is just like beautifully piping. Okay. I'm just gonna go around again. Make it a little bit thicker so that I can wipe this down the sides. going to use my little spatula here. I kind of want this to run down the side so I can use what comes down on the sides of my cake. I know if you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I <laughs> don't have an offset spatula or a cake table or anything like that. I kind of go with the more rustic decorating style but you can of course decorate this however you wish. And then you could of course, you know, if you wanted to color some of this orange or something green, whatever. So you could do a little carrot or draw a bunny or whatever you wanted to do if you wanted to decorate it for Easter whatever fun things your imagination comes up with. Okay, so I'm happy with that around the sides. So I'm just gonna just kinda put the rest of this on the top here because I did put it a little bit thinner after I went down the sides. I don't want to waste any of it because this is really good. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of go back and forth. Covering up anything that seems thin. Okay, and there you have it. And I'm gonna go ahead and slice into this here in a little bit. And I will let you take a look at the inside. Wow, that was delicious. I hope you'll give that recipe a try. My husband said vegetables never tasted so good. I'll make sure to put a link to the recipe in the description box below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. And thank you for stopping by Grains of Small Places. Goodbye. Uh, uh,